Hallelujah. I was walking up to the church. I told some of the guys, I said, they baptize people there. They baptize, no, they don't baptize people there, and thank God. They baptize people there today. I loved it. It's good to be home. My name is Brett Chamberlain. I am 43 years old, and this is home for me, the area. I have three beautiful kids. I saw one of them sneak in here just a minute ago in the back. He was at a football camp. His name is Evan. He's my youngest, and I have two more, uh, Ethan and Emma, here on the front row. I'm so blessed that they are here today. They have made a sacrifice as well this year for me, and it is a beautiful thing. I was raised in a Christian home. I was taught, my sister and I were taught, my, my sister is Michelle, we were taught encouragement, we were taught discipline, we were taught all the things and to succeed, succeed in life, everything. Our parents loved us and adored us. More importantly, my father, F.C., raised my sister and I in church at Broadmoor Assembly of God. Some of you are from there. We were there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and any other time my father saw fit for me to be there to get something from God. It wasn't a routine for him. It was just a way of life. That's the way I was raised. My friends were there. My best friend, who, who's a pastor now, David Logan, went there. My activities were there. Everything was there. So the question you have all in your mind right now, why are you in a pair of black pants and a white shirt sitting up here right now? It's real simple. God had a plan for me. It was detailed and specific. And it did not mirror, it did not coexist, it did not agree with the plan that Brett Chamberlain had for himself. And once I tried to work my own plan, therefore I had to make compromises in my life. And those compromises led from one thing to another. Pretty soon, the sin of arrogance and pride were all over me. It led to a spirit of rebellion. And I don't mean just a little bit of rebellion. I mean a lot of rebellion. That led to a ticket to a roller coaster ride. Terrifying roller coaster ride of peaks and valleys that I would not put on anyone. The peaks became shorter and the valleys became longer and more frequently and they became deeper until I came to a point of despair in my life. That was just terrible. I lost friends. I lost family time with my nieces and my dad. I lost a marriage. I lost all sorts of things because of this rebellion. And you say, well, you're a teen child. Alcohol was my savior. That's what I medicated myself with. And near the end, in my despair, the, th the thing that in the end, what I was looking at in my life, it was the love, the thing I loved, the thing I trusted, the thing that was, I believed in was simply falling like sand through my hands and disappearing. And I had nothing to turn to except for a bottle of taka vodka or two. And I had to choose between life or death, and I chose to call F.C. Chamberlain, the man who stood between the gate of hell and me is a person who prayed for my protection. So I called him and he said, call Teen Challenge. I called Teen Challenge. I spoke with Brother Matt. He was not supposed to be there, but over a three meeting time, I agreed to go. I went November the 7th. And I want to fast forward because I don't have much time. To January 28th. Oh my, what a day. God had laid down some, some foundations for about three months for me. And I went to a church in, in Hodge, having to be one that my grandfather pastored at for years. And Gary Phillips at the end of his service pulled me up to the front. He says, I don't normally do this, but I have something that God wants you to hear. And I wasn't going to say this, but this is, this is really the turning point for real in my Christian life, who I was going to be. 24 years of addiction to alcohol I never turned away from it one time once I started. 
Pastor Gary looked at me, and he says, this is from God, this is not from me. And he quoted from Hosea chapter 6, 1 and 2. I'll never forget it. And he said, this is from God. He says, come back to me. Come back to the Lord. Come back. This is Hosea talking to Israel. Come back to the Lord. Though I have torn you to pieces, I'm going to heal you. Although I have injured you, I'm going to bind up your wounds. On the second day, I'm going to revive you. And on the third day, I'm going to raise you up so you can live in my presence. And Gary Bentley, Brother Gary Bentley looked at me and says, Brett Chamberlain, this is your third day. At that, at that moment, he, he said a few other things, and that's for another story. It's another time. But the Holy Spirit fell down in that place right after that. And for the 20 minutes, I saw my alcohol addiction be delivered from me, erased completely. The years of depression that I suffered with were gone. They were history. The oppression that I felt, the shame and the guilt from years of running from God were over that moment. Hallelujah. So what now? I got work to do. I got a lot of work to do. A lot, a lot, a lot of work to do. And I'll sum up this, and I'll I'll finish now with with a a verse that means so much to me because it kind of just tells you what I told you. It's from from Colossians 1, chapter 1, 21 through 23, and I'll paraphrase a little bit. It says, And although you were formerly alienated, hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, yet... Jesus Christ reconciled you through his death on the cross so that he could present you before God, holy, blameless, and beyond reproach. If you indeed continue in the faith, you got to keep working, you continue in the faith and not turn away from the gospel that you have been given. Thank you, church. I love you, Central.